nous allons voir dans cette séquence comment le secteur financier... In this sequence, we're going to examine how the financial sector globally is seizing upon the SDGs and what it's doing about it. Let's start with a brief definition. What do we mean by the financial sector? There are several businesses within that. Insur banks, insurance companies, asset managers, both uh, sovereign funds, pension funds, insurance companies as investors of their own reserves, and finally, a whole set of service providers, uh, ratings agencies, uh, indi index providers, and so on. What are the rules of operation in the sector? What is its role? Its role is to do what the economists call allocation of capital. They move money around. What it is operating principle, the essential principle is to act based on a trade-off between yield and risk, evaluating the potential yield and the risk that is run. And finally, another characteristic is the fact that it's an industry that is highly regulated, by which I mean that there are regulators, finance ministries, central banks, independent regulatory authorities, which set the rules for the players in the financial sector. What I have just described is essentially the private financial sector, which I shall be focusing on, essentially, in terms of the SDGs. And we will see towards the end how the public financial sector, essentially public banks, development banks, multilateral, bilateral or national banks, are also concerned by the issue. But of course, the financial sector is essentially private. Among the businesses in finance, the one which seized upon the sustainable development goals the quickest was the fund and asset managers. They have been doing so for about 15 years in terms of what is called a socially responsible investment. What do we mean by that? It is the taking into account of data that are environmental, social or governance in deciding to invest or not in order to mitigate extra financial risk that can be connected to these uh, ESG factors. The world of socially responsible investments is still a minority. It's about 24% of assets under management globally, but it's growing very fast. 25% in 2015. Globally, the regulators, or at least some regulators, notably in Europe, have an action that is driving the world of asset management to align on taking these extra financial criteria into account. And one can be optimistic and hope that they will become generalized worldwide. Although currently, in Europe and to a lesser extent in the US, this is where things are happening. But very clearly, a socially responsible investment is no longer a niche. It's still a minority investment, but it is significant. A smaller proportion of investors and asset managers are not happy to settle with uh, merely the extra financial risk. They are also seeking to have an impact on sectors of the economy in which they invest. It's what is known as impact investing. This accounts for a very low proportion of investments, but it's also growing very fast. About 2% of assets under management, but 40% growth in 2016, something very fast. The idea is to identify indicators to measure how the financial flows triggered can improve the social situation of such and such community, the environmental situation, the energy transformation, 
through the use of objective indicators. These impact investors are driven by a more general movement in finance. It may uh, it's a kind of a helicopter view of the entire industry that is increasingly considering that it cannot remain passive when allocating capital, that it cannot merely follow the movements in the real economy. And this not only because it must for ethical reasons of responsibility, but also because they themselves run risks. One of the heroes of uh, green finance, the governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, identified that there were risks in not acting, physical risks, transitional risks. And the idea, which is now shared by many regulators globally, is percolating within the world of finance. And there are two things that are encouraging its generalization. Two major events. One, the Paris Accord about the climate, and two, the agenda of sustainable development goals. What do the SDGs contribute to this quest for more usefulness in the flow of finance, in the transformation of the world. What do they contribute? Two things. First, a universal framework of what one can actually have an impact on. And in that sense, it makes the life of finance is easier by giving them a whole set of initiatives that they can undertake and the means to identify the impacts of their investments. The fight against poverty, access to water, climate, biodiversity, and so on and so forth. And the second thing they contribute is a deadline. 2030. Something that can fit into an action plan. So when you combine the universal framework and the deadline, you obtain a matrix that can help to define key performance indicators for financiers. And that is what is starting to happen. In concrete terms, this means for investors that they must set goals, sustainable development goals, measure the impacts, and report to the various stakeholders. The two major risks in all of this are, on the one hand, the risk of uh, extreme diversity of methods, and on the other hand, a risk of non-compatibility between the various SDGs. It's a difficulty that is not unique to the financial sector, of course. Uh, it exists in every sector of the economy that is taking an interest in these issues. Not only must you have a positive impact on some of the SDGs, but you must also not have negative impact on others. So, a great number of initiatives are appearing, and the UN, or more precisely the Finance Initiative, the UNFFI, uh, published uh, guidelines, a framework, and suggested that financial players adopt them. The amount of assets under management by uh, various uh, fund managers and so on across the world who have decided to accept principles of sustainable development laid down by the UN is about 1.6 trillion dollars, which is uh, quite a lot of money. And therefore, embracing these principles should encourage investors to follow the advice of the UN, not only to adequately measure their impact, but also to measure their negative impact on 
uh, some of the SDGs. There are a number of initiatives that are appearing beyond uh, those of the UN. I'm thinking about the common principles in Northern Europe established by Dutch investors and also uh, Swedish investors, and in both cases, pension funds in these countries have seized upon these uh, SDGs uh, to evaluate their action and have decided to work together to promote the SDGs and justify uh, the users of their pension funds of the usefulness of uh, what they are doing. So there are a number of difficulties, the diversity of methods, as I was saying, all of this will need to converge and the measuring tools will need to uh, be consistent. There are facilitating factors that may help to accelerate things, the fact that the financial world, which is highly innovative, is creating and has created financial products, I'm talking about bonds specifically, uh, that are oriented towards a number of goals. There's climate, the climate, the environment, the so-called green bonds, which are normal bonds, but which are identified by uh, the purpose or the object they are funding, but it's also uh, emerging in the social world, sustainable bonds and so on. So when these types of products are created, they can serve as a support for investment by pension funds who are very keen to see them. And in the capital markets, uh, the supply and demand effects means that volumes that can easily be identified as being favorable to the SDGs can increase very quickly. So there are still great difficulties. To give you just one example, how do you handle shares in listed companies? Because of course, a listed company is, uh, of course, it's a great asset class in the finance world. It is uh, rather uncommon that a listed company can be entirely earmarked in terms of its business or its impact on the world. It could be entirely earmarked to one, two or three SDGs. How can you say that such and such a company is uh, working in favor of that, although some companies allow you to do this, those who define a mission uh, statement, for instance, and uh, and that is uh, a heated debate in France at the moment. So that is an issue that has not yet been settled. Likewise, there's the issue of the trajectory. It's not just the, an issue of measuring the impacts of financial flows, particularly for the climate or biodiversity or the impacts of these, the instant impacts of the financial flows, but also the future impacts. So, a report of these impacts onto the trajectory of a company and its projects. All of these difficulties are basically technical. But if there is a very strong aspiration and momentum from the regulators, they will be overcome. Public banks, by which I mean multilateral banks, the World Bank, the European Investment Bank, bilateral development banks, such as the AFD, the French Development Agency, the national public banks that exist in many countries, in France, the Caisse des Dépôts, is a part of this category, should and are seizing these ODDs, these SDGs. And it's a natural movement for them because they are at the service of a governmental action, be it international or domestic. And in a sense, the SDGs are the agenda for public action by 2030 for all societies, of course, but also for governmental action and uh, the design of public policies themselves. And public banks are instruments of these public policies. So they are increasingly taking an interest and embracing these SDGs as uh, the financial industry in its whole and in the whole of it, they all, as part of their missions, I'm thinking about development banks, 
They have already factored in uh, the fight against poverty, which is the number one SDG. And in recent years, even before 2015, they had added elements about the climate, uh, which have been strengthened, further strengthened by the Paris Accord. So the main difficulty, of course, comes from the nature of the funding needs of sustainable development, which is crucial in defining the trade-off or the balance between public and private finance. Some of the sustainable development goals, I'm thinking particularly about health, which is goal number three, and education which is SDG number four, require essentially public funding. Goals such as number two or number 12, agriculture, can be largely financed by private investment. Investments for the reduction of greenhouse gases are different, they're a mix of various types of funding, both public and private. So all of this calls for a strategic positioning of public development banks and more broadly, a strategic use of public resources in order to attract these fundings and reserve them to sectors where they're most needed and attract private funding, which of course will be the majority, by leveraging the features of public funding and its ability to take greater risk in the longer term. In conclusion, the Sustainable Development Goals and the manner in which they are factored in define what could be called sustainable finance, both in the interest of the world and the interest of finance itself, because there is no sustainable finance in a world that is not sustainable. And the risks that the capital markets are also running, it was well established for the climate, the pursuit of a model that is completely imbalanced in the global economy, these risks are also a great driver for the evolution of the financial sector itself.